Are the next generation combat helmets a huge step forward or a big old hype train to absolutely no one? New materials give the helmet a 35% improved protection rating while being 8 to 25% lighter overall. Brigadier General Anthony Potts said, quote, We've done enough testing to know that it absolutely meets the current level of threat. This is the Army's new IHIPS helmet. This polyethylene and carbon fiber helmet has a myriad of features, including add-on rifle-rated armor and a mandible for turret gunners. However, it's currently being issued largely standalone. This helmet has been hailed as a real wonder technology with its new materials. But the hype is bullshit, as the Army is already replacing it, and I think I might have an idea as to why. Some of you may remember the emotional anger I had with the lackluster performance of the Russian Army's standard issue 6B47 helmet, where I asked questions like, does the Russian government care about its soldiers? That, my friends, is foreshadowing. And no, before anyone asks, this helmet isn't listed on someone's clothing record somewhere. Many polyethylene helmets like the ECH have been able to resist some serious impacts in other tests. Some of the 3M and Opscore helmets these days are now rated against rifle rounds. And cost be damned, helmets stopping rifle rounds should be the new American standard. The technology is here, and don't give me any cop-out excuses stating that the frag protection is enough, because we've had frag protection for over 100 years. Rant aside, existing polyethylene helmets set the bar pretty high for the eye hips, and I've heard a ton of hype over it. The other special character for this video is the Russian 7N21-1 armor-piercing 9x19mm bullet. It has a hardened steel core that separates from the copper on impact. This bullet is effective for soft armor and barrier penetration and is loaded a bit hotter than normal. We don't have a chronograph today for these reloads, but I will test the FPS in a future video. I know that's annoying, but feel free to email me a little later if you'd like to know any specific test-related data, including the FPS of these bullets. A fan has also done me a huge favor and compiled a new test results file that combines hit results from all previous armor and helmet tests that you can download on Google Drive in the link below. I received these bullets from Flat Range Operator, a good friend of mine and an exotic bullet collector in the United States. It is incredibly difficult to get Eastern armor-piercing rounds in the US, so if you have any, please don't hesitate to reach out as I'm testing Western armor versus their relevant Eastern armor-piercing analogs as I did for the Russian body armor videos. I don't have an official sponsor for this video, but Element Training Center in Holt, Florida lets me use their range and a lot of their weapons at no charge. They have an extensive facility that I've been doing all my testing at. Check them out and you might catch me doing some mad scientist stuff out there. I really can't thank them enough. The first round we're going to shoot is the classic 1950s steel core Czechoslovak 9mm round. This is a slower 9mm AP round that so far no helmet has been able to stop. I'm not expecting a good result here, but I want to hit the helmet at its strongest and push its limits. I'm shooting out of a Glock 34. <laughs> Amazingly, the helmet stopped the bullet, but that's fatal deformation. Still, that's an interesting result, and it so far suggests that polyethylene and the carbon fiber combo are more effective than Kevlar. Impressed with this, I've gone straight to another heavy hitter. I have a round of 45 super velocity. This completely copper hollow point round hits similar to 357 Magnum defensive loads. I've used it against a few helmets as a high energy round. Most notably, the Kevlar Russian Tor helmet stopped it with very little deformation. I'm shooting it out of a lightweight commander that Garrett of Element Training Center let me borrow. Recording? Yep. Well, that's not good. To put it in the words of a witnessing former Ceridine employee, this is a fatal deformation. The helmet wasn't compromised on this side, and other Kevlar helmets easily deal with this round. This result suggests that although the eye hips resist penetration better than Kevlar, it deforms much worse. This honestly is a terrible result, so let's take it down a notch. The next round is SMB 9mm 124 grain, fairly standard 9mm FMJ, civilian ammunition. <laughs> yeah. No, in my luck, I'd hide behind you and it still hit me. Cast the number one. <laughs> mm, I don't like that. This is bad. While this deformation is less than the super velocity, this is still at least a traumatic brain injury inducing deformation, and this is a completely unacceptable result. This helmet is absolutely not level 3 NIJ. A PAGS helmet from the 80s could have produced better results than the IHIPS. 
This is absolutely horrifying to me and shakes my confidence, and it should worry you as well. This helmet as it's being used now defends against rounds equally as poorly as the Russian 6B47. However, these results show that it is an adequate fragmentation stopper and does have the saving grace of having the option to add rifle-proof armor. The suspension and padding are also superior when compared to the 47, but these are all copes. Copes for the ballistic performance. In an age where rifle-proof helmets are being produced, why spend $1,100 a piece on helmets that are outperformed by Kevlar competitors that would cost the army a third of the price? I must not have a big enough brain to comprehend the decision making behind this project. However, there is a golden lining. The army seems to agree with my assessment as they're planning to add the letters NG to the eye hips to make the next generation integrated helmet production system. The... I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. This upgraded eye hips promises to improve ballistic protection and fix some of the vulnerabilities of the first generation eye hips, like the night vision bracket screw. To summarize, this helmet is ballistically inferior to Kevlar analogs at a time where rifle-rated polyethylene helmets exist. Although obviously my sample test size is small, my assessment is that the eye hips should be abandoned in favor of those rifle-rated polyethylene helmets. If you doubt my results, I challenge you to test another eye hips yourself. However, I will happily get another helmet to test if enough people complain about the way I did things here. I understand that there are careers and yep. emotions tied to this helmet, and if you're professionally involved, I'd say you can still take solace in the fact that the standalone helmet still stops fragmentation. That being said, the helmet was still a good target for Russian 7N21-1, as the eye hip stopped a steel cord bullet. Will the Russian AP round succeed in penetrating, where the older steel core failed? Let's try it first from the Vitya submachine gun. Looks like a pen. The bullet penetrated the helmet and the copper part of the projectile left some deformation as the steel separated, but the Vityaz makes it unfair. Let's shoot it with the same pistol we shot the older steel round with. Huh. <laughs> oh, oh, a clear pen. Oh wow, that ammo is something else. It's very special ammo. We managed to recover the hardened steel cores from the rounds. They're perfectly intact with no sharing, cleanly separating from the copper. This won't be the last time you see these bullets. I'll make a follow-up video with some harder targets and a chronograph. That's everything for today. A test of Chinese PLA-issued modern body armor is also coming. Remember, I'm always seeking donations of arm-piercing ammo, helmets, and body armor. This video also didn't have an official sponsor, so if you're interested in getting your products sold, hit me up. Goodbye for now.